he shows up. You just tell me when you want to. You want to go? <coughs> Hello. Hello. Now let me know if you can hear me because she didn't put me on on a mic. Can you hear me? Okay. I'll I'll try to scream a little bit, but not too loud. So, hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. My name is Nina DeAndrea. This is your guide to a whole food, plant-based lifestyle. I'm a board-certified nurse practitioner. I work for Sarasota Memorial uh, in the anticoagulation clinic. So today, I'd just like to let you know that I'm not, going, I'm not trying to diagnose or give you advice on your health care needs. Um, everybody has different dietary needs, so you can, it's always good to talk to your health care provider or your MD or your nutritionist. Okay, and I'm not saying that this like pre will. I may have used the word prevent in here, but not cure or those kinds of things. I'm just uh, when I say prevent, it may be from some of the data, and they're using that word. So for today, my goal is to inspire you, educate you, and empower you on a whole food plant plant based lifestyle. So I thought I would start, there we go, inspire you with my story and where I came from and how I am standing here today. So my story, in 1972, at age 14, I became a vegetarian. I grew up pretty much not eating a lot of meat in my household, so it was an easy, easy transition to become a vegetarian. I did it for a lot of health reasons and at that time for some spiritual reasons. And I remained a vegetarian eating some eggs and dairy products until 1987 I became a full vegan when I read John Robbins' book Diet for a New America and we'll discuss what that the implications of that book a little down the road. So from 1987 always pretty much a strict vegan, maybe vacillated between having some dairy here and there. And a couple of years ago, I say I fell off the vegetarian vegan wagon, not really eating meat, but eating what I call junk food veganism. So one year ago, just about a year ago today, I became very strict again with being a whole food plant-based person. I had gained a lot of weight, and so as I stand here today, this is my picture from one year ago. So as of today, I am now down 107 pounds, okay? I'm, thank you. I'm not counseling you on weight loss. This is just a result of a whole food, plant-based lifestyle and um, eating healthy. So hoping that inspires you that I am, um, Walking the walk as well as talking the talk, as they say. So now I'm going to give you some information, educate you on what I call the movement. And that's pretty much what, the, what it's called, the whole food, plant-based movement lifestyle. So we'll start with obesity in America. We know, unfortunately, that Americans are getting fatter, and I'm not saying that to anyone in particular. Just overall the data supports that, and I think many of us would probably agree. It is now estimated by from the CDC that about one-third of adults in America are considered obese. That is a BMI 30 or greater, and that's data from 2015, 2016. For me, what's a little alarming is that the fastest growing age group from ages two to five are actually becoming the most obese, the fastest. And um, why? I think we can all agree bigger portions 
uh, supersize uh, buffets, uh, just lots and lots of food available in America. I forgot to say, jump in, let me know if you have a question on anything or if I need to clarify anything, okay? Um, there's a film, is it called Supersize? Yes, that kind of gives the, the overview of the big portions. Increase in meat consumption. Now, and again, I just want to clarify, I'm not trying to convince anybody to give up meat. I'm just giving you information. Um, so from about 50, 60 years ago, Americans were estimated to eat about 140 pounds of meat a year. Current data shows that now we eat about 200 pounds. So that's a big increase over the last 50, 60 years of 60 pounds of meat. I mean, if we weighed that, that would really be a lot. So um, that's part of the, the problem. Increased consumption of fast foods. Well, I think we all probably would agree with that. There's a burger, not Burger King, well, Burger King, McDonald's, Taco Bell, all the, I'm not ragging on any one particular, equal opportunity fast food. Um, they're everywhere, right? And it's easy, drive in, drive out. Some of them have healthful options now, but still the portions are large. They're still high in fat. Increase in sugar and white, cons white flour consumption. It's estimated that Americans eat about 100, and this kind of got me, 150 pounds a year of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. I was thinking those, what are those, little 10 pound bags of sugar? It'd be like t almost 15 of those. That's a lot of sugar. And the same amount in white flour, 150 pounds, which we both know don't have a lot of nutritional value and have a lot of um, calories. Well, hi, Ruth. You look familiar. And we have a more sedentary lifestyle. Um, we're a more, more of a car culture, especially in Florida. People don't, you know, we don't walk as much because things are so spread out. It, uh, they say that, fr the data says that in 1950, about 50% of jobs were more active. People weren't as sedentary. And now about 20% of people only have an active, active job. So a lot of us do sit. Um, in our workplace and just not as active because we were Americans kind of work a lot in comparison in compared to the rest of the world so just some terms about uh, vegetarian and vegan so a lot of people who are pescatarians those are kind of a semi vegetarian people who eat primarily plant-based and do occasionally eat some fish then we have the lacto-ovo vegetarians. Those are people who eat all the plant-based foods, including eggs and dairy. There are people who just eat ovo, eggs and no dairy. Lacto, people who eat no eggs and dairy. And then you have what is a vegan, which has now been rebranded pretty much as a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And they don't eat any animal products and yes eat lots of fruits and veggies and everything from the plant realm any questions so what is whole food plant-based well whole foods mean consuming the whole food as it looks in nature eating an apple eating a banana cabbage you know beans rice how it's how it's harvested and not very processed. And it would be avoiding those processed foods like the sugar and the white flour and a lot of processed oils. There is some debate among the whole food plant-based community whether to use processed oils such as olive oil, canola oil, or none at all. So it just depends on everybody's kind of personal preference. So plant be Plant-based means just plants, nothing that comes from any animal. So a, plant, a whole food plant-based person, if they were being pure, would avoid all kinds of animal products. 
There are some of us not, I don't use honey, but there are a lot of people that wouldn't even use honey because it comes from uh, bees, I guess, is that an animal, an insect, from another living being, I guess, is maybe the best way to say it. So it just depends, and, and it all varies. Everybody's different in how they feel about their ethical choices and their health choices. So when and why, why is this now kind of the term that we hear a lot? Eat more plants, eat more vegetables, eat less meat. Well, vegetarianism and veganism have been around for hundreds of years. A lot of it stems in, from research that I've seen and reading has stemmed from compassionate or religious reasons. So you have the seven-day Adventist people, they are vegetarian. Um, I, and I, this is not an uh, inclusive list, this is a couple that I could get up. Buddhists do, are vegetarians. I, not to, I, I, I became a vegetarian in 72 because I became a Buddhist at that time, so that was for my spiritual and religious reasons. But why now? Why all of this? Well, I think everybody probably could agree that the standard American diet is probably not cutting it for most people. We, there are many links, probably maybe causing wouldn't be the best word, but that's what I use, many chronic illnesses. And uh, the data now is pretty clear that a lot of it has been specifically linked to the high consumption of animal products and processed food. Marion, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, no, that's good. I just wanted to make sure. And, and that's okay. Um, I don't have the data on a Mediterranean diet to present. I know what it is, and there is a lot of good healthful benefits from it and research that's been done on that. So that's why I said processed oils, that is a personal choice. And the Mediterranean diet, as Marion uh, mentioned, it does promote olive oil, but that's a more healthful oil not the um, hydrogenated processed foods. It's a good question, thank you. Exactly, right. And we'll get to some of the programs that pro uh, promote that, yes, and you're right. Um, so back to why now. People, we live in an age where we can Google everything, People are more involved in their health care, I mean, I think, than ever before. And we're just more proactive, and we want to have better health. It doesn't mean that we're not going to, as I say, pass on and leave the planet, but it would be nice to have good quality of health while we're here. As my friend Cheryl over here says, I'll pick on her, you want to have life above the wellness line. You want to have optimal health while we're here going through this experience, as I say. And it really is, and we'll talk about that a little more, a more sustainable food source. So the book that had inspired me to become vegan in 1987 was written by John Robbins. He actually is one of the sons of the founders of Baskin Robbins Ice Cream. And this book created a lot of, I'll just say hoo-ha, just because he really did what I call a big expose on factory farming. There are very graphic pictures in the book, so if you do buy the book, just be aware of that. And um, it, it goes through what happens to animals in the factory farming process. And he also um, does a very good job of outlining the environmental impact of um, factory farming, on our resources, on our grazing land, on our water. Then in 2004, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, a researcher out of Cornell, did this long study in the 80s called the China Study. And in, from my perspective, I think that this really pushed the whole food plant-based movement to the forefront, because this 
study. I know there are people who, you know, there's been some criticism of it that it wasn't as extensive as it should be, but it really did examine the link between high meat product consumption, animal product consumption, and chronic diseases and cancer. So he went into a couple of counties in rural China, um, surveyed people in the early 80s and later in the, um, in the late 80s. I think there was about 6,500 people total and um, just looked at their diet and, their, and how that linked to their chronic diseases. So basically, they had lower rates of chronic diseases. And also in the book, just as a little aside, there is a little study that he does highlight that he had seen before he had gone into doing this whole big um, study was that in India, someone was looking at rats, doing a study in rats and um, feeding them a high uh, animal product diet and saw they saw that cancer genes turned on and off um, depending on the amount of animal protein that the rats were fed or when it was decreased. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And that's kind of what got him thinking. Another little fact about Colin Campbell is that he worked for the meat industry and was looking how to make, at that time before he got into this, how to make bigger, better beef and more production of, of meat. So it's kind of an a interesting turn of event. That, that's right. Thank you. Yes, yes. And the study was done with him and his son. So this is just a picture of him. He actually did coin the term whole food plant-based. And I don't know, he's in his late 80s, I think. And he looks marvelous. Yeah, he's awesome. So to get some a, a nice overview of what the China study is, and it also looks at some, is just a good documentary, is Forks Over Knives documentary. This highlights the work of the China study and Drs. Campbell and Dr. Caldwell Esselton, which I'll talk about in just a minute, move, uh, minute and the whole food plant-based movement. You can, it's for, I think it's free on Netflix. You can go to their website and um, watch it for free. It's a great documentary. So Dr. Caldwell Esselstein, I'm not ever sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, was a former open heart surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic. He basically was got, said there's got to be a better answer to doing open heart surgery. What can I do? So he did um, a 20-year study looking at the length of uh, how beneficial a whole food plant-based diet would be on reversing basically heart disease. And he found that there was a, a correlation that people did have less symptoms of angina. And in his book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, there's actually pictures of cardiac catheterization pictures of before and after. And it's quite startling. You can see the difference between some of the blockages and the plaque and then some of the reversal of it after being even a couple of months on a whole food plant-based diet. So he's been very instrumental in the movement. And his son, because I didn't put, that, didn't put a slide in, Rip Esselstyn is a firefighter, I think, oh, I'm going to say Texas, no, I'm not sure which state, who has been very, um, how to say, proactive, thank you, um, in this movement, and he's written a couple books, The Engine 2 Diet. He got his whole uh, firehouse to switch to a whole food plant-based diet, and they cooked and everything, and so he's been very instrumental and a big proponent of the movement. He has a couple of books. On the back there, there's a couple of pages of resources in his books, and you can look that up. He's been here at Whole Foods. He does challenges with people. He's a very, uh, very cool guy. So it, the, the whole food plant-based movement has kind of been loosely dubbed as the food revolution, um, which the word revolution doesn't necessarily mean. It can mean going out and taking over the government. But this is kind of like taking over the food uh, pyramid, the the food as we know it. So 
Um, this is a very great book that gives a nice overview, Voices of the Food Revolution. And here's just a, a few of those people, and there's many, many more on the list. Let me just get to my thing here. Any questions so far? Okay. So this is one that, that Dr. Campbell said, to answer the answer to the American health crisis is, is the food that each of us chooses to put in our mouths each day. It is as simple as that. So basically he's saying, you know, what we, what we put in our mouths, what we eat is going to be reflected in our health. I just kind of like quotes from people. Then Dr. Dean Ornish, <laughs> what's your name? He's just clapping over here. I love it. Um, and we're going to talk about his program. He's been a giant proponent in this movement, and um, we offer his program, which I'll talk about. And I love this. Think about it. Heart disease and diabetes, which account for more deaths in the U.S. and worldwide than everything else combined, are completely preventable by making comprehensive lifestyle changes without drugs or surgery. So again, another proponent, and he's based his on I, what I feel is some scientific data. He's a you know regular medical doctor, and we'll talk about his program. One of my inspirations um, was Dr. Joel Furman, who I saw speak on PBS many years ago, and. Um, He's an internist, I think, New Jersey or in the eastern seaboard now. He's written several books, but I love this. You cannot buy your health. You must earn it through healthy living. And I think that that's quite true. I think that we all can give ourselves better health. And then lastly, I love this guy, Dr. Kim Williams. He was the first vegan president of the American College of Cardiologists. He served from 2015 to 2016. And his kind of aha moment, I think it was back in maybe 2003 or 4, he had high cholesterol, high bad cholesterol. And then he thought, I need to do something about this. Then he met a patient who had, I think not his patient, but when he was down in the hospital who had had a nuclear scan that had been, that had a lot of heart disease. This patient had done the six-week program with Dr. Dean Ornish. When they did the scan after the six-week program, it had reversed the heart disease. And that was what inspired him to become a vegan or a whole food plant-based person. And um, he's not the president anymore, just from 2015 to 2016. But I love this. There are two kinds of cardiologists, he says, vegans and those who haven't read the data. And I, I quite like that. And also, I mean, I get a lot of questions. People say, don't you think it's extreme that you don't eat meat and those kinds of things? And I like that he says, well, it's kind of extreme to do open heart surgery and take veins out, and, you know. So I think he's kind of right on, on some aspects of that. And this is very recent. There was this recent issue of Time magazine in their health section called The Best medicine. Doctors are embracing creative ways to use food to improve health and prevent disease. And I loved this quote from Dr. Mozafarian. Um, the idea of food as medicine is not only an idea whose time has come, it's an idea that is absolutely essential to our healthcare system. So this is very current that doctors and healthcare providers around the country are thinking uh, on in these terms. So what are the benefits? Well, it's definitely heart healthy, as we've talked about. It does reduce the risk for developing cardiovascular heart disease. It has been shown to reduce colorectal cancer by about 20%, reduce your risk for developing by about 20%. It does improve brain health. Um, it can slow or prevent the cognitive decline and cognitive decline and um, Alzheimer's. There is a gentleman, I don't know if I really would call him necessarily whole food plant-based, but neurologist Dr. Daniel Amen, A-M-E-N, who is also on PBS, and he talks about brain health and so um, 
how diet can help improve it and slow down the um, progression of it. Can reduce the risk for developing diabetes. Some of the statistics show by about 30%, and it can improve um, blood sugar control. Can lower the rates of obesity. Um, Dr. Amy Roth, who's sitting here, I'll pick on her now, had posted a little article on her um, Facebook page that said uh, ob obesity can increase your risk for cancer by 7%. So that's, that to me, that's quite a lot. Improves cholesterol levels and blood pressure, and it definitely improves your gut health. All the fiber, all those plants set that, that, set that stage as prebiotics and help give us um, good bacteria, which is good for our immunity. It's also good for Mother Earth. The, um, there, I don't have it up here with me. There was an article published in November of last year in The Lancet, which is one of the oldest medical journals um, around that talks about we should have a conversation about meat, and it does talk about the impacts environmentally. Um, we have, most of us are pretty aware of, you know, we're deforesting, doing a lot of cattle grazing, it, a lot of water uh, waste there, um, water runoff, it pollutes the fresh water supply, uh, re and increases greenhouse uh, uh, emissions. So if we move towards a more whole, fu whole food plant-based lifestyle, we can reduce these. Uh, things and there was also another article. Sorry, I just read so many articles. Oh, it was out of London. The scientists in London actually are recommending what they call a planetary diet, which is basically eating more plants and vegetables and reducing the effects on the environment with all the factory farming and glazing. So there are. It's always fun to see. There's a lot of whole food, plant-based celebrities and. Um, athletes out there, and this is just a little list. So there's a lot of people who, you know, I always like Venus Williams. Boy, I mean, I don't want her hitting a ball in my direction, right? She's in good shape. Carl Lewis was. That was one I didn't know. Um, Bill Clinton, when we talked about Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, that's what inspired him to become a vegan. He read his book and since he had had bypass surgery, he thought maybe it was time to put down the supersized burgers, and he became vegan. I think he's a little bit more of a pescatarian now, but that was his inspiration. So a lot of people on that list. A lot of people, I know like Alicia Silverstone, it was for compassionate reasons for not um, wanting to kill animals. So what to eat? This is what I get a lot of questions of people ask me. What do you eat? You don't eat, eat, you don't eat meat. You must not eat. Yes, there's a lot of things to eat besides just meat. And I'm, please don't think that I'm saying meat's bad, you're horrible people. That's not what I'm talking about. But there are a lot of foods. And I like, and the pyramid is really, you know, the base is all your fruits and vegetables. Our grains, our whole grains, our leafy greens, our legumes, and, you know, a smaller amount of the high fat foods if you're going to use olive oil or I use a lot of nuts and avocado myself. So that and that's just the base. And I like that pyramid. So there are people also s oh yes Jen, do you want me to go back? I'm going to, you know, I'm not a dietitian or nutritionist, but I'm going to say yes. There are nutrients that are in legumes that, that, yes, the germ, that are not in the whole grains. So, I mean, I don't necessarily always eat them together, you know. Yes, Miriam. Um, well, that's, again, a personal preference. Soy is a legume a bean you know um, I don't I try not to eat a lot of processed soy I eat some edamame I do use some tofu and some tempeh but again that's a personal preference there is there is 
data on both sides of the argument, no soy, yes soy. So I just leave that to people to sift through and figure out what, what works for you. But you know, tofu is a tofu is a bean curd, you know. And I'll just take a leap there and say, you know, especially you know for women who have had estrogen positive breast cancer should not eat soy products. So that's why, you know, that's a personal preference and a conversation with your healthcare provider. So people will ask, well, where do you get your protein if you don't eat meat? You're not getting any protein. Well, I did put back there um, a handout that's how you calculate your protein needs. Americans are estimated to eat upwards of 100 grams of protein a day, which is far more than if you do the calculation than you probably really need. Someone my size, it goes by weight and age, it needs probably about 50 grams. So if you eat a balanced whole food plant-based diet, you will certainly get enough protein. You know, lentils are w amazing. They're so high on the list. And I eat, myself, I do eat a lot of garbanzos. I make a lot of hummus. Any questions about that? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. There, right, right, exactly, yes. Because I'll just talk a little more to that. Is, and we now feed cows grain, which cows do not have the stomach for grain. They're supposed to be grazers, so there is some issue with that, right? Yes, they don't eat other cows, right? And humans are the, some of the only ones that drink another species' milk. That's a, you know, I've seen people's shirts that say that. You know, I've also seen... Uh, you know, I call them militant vegans, and that's okay. I used to be one a long time ago, but that I don't eat anything that poops or something like that. I've seen, <laughs> you know, and that's okay. Uh, it, it, you know, it's really a personal preference, right? Any any other questions? So, again, my, one of my I, one of my gurus of the whole food plant-based movement, Dr. Joel Furman. I love this acronym that he came up with, G-BOMB. And it's about these foods are the healthiest anti-cancer foods. So he recommends trying to eat these as much as you can every day. Greens, kale, broccoli, cauliflower is also a cruciferous ve vegetable, um, Brussels sprouts, they have high anti-cancer properties, beans, onions, you know, you think onions, but they really, you know, they're so good when you saute them with some water and glaze them and get them really crispy. Anyway, that's me. Mushrooms have a lot of vitamins, a lot of anti-cancer properties, all the berries, and your seeds. So I just like that. It's an easy way to, to remember. If you get those in your diet, you're getting a lot of colors, a lot of nutrients, in there, so it helps keep things balanced. I'm checking how we're doing on time, so okay. So if you want to know what I eat, here's what I eat. So my tip, one of my typical breakfasts is oatmeal, berries, almond milk, right, and some nuts. Lunch, just what I had today, big old bowl of raw veggies, hummus, some olives, and an apple for dessert. Dinner, sometimes I have, I'll have baked tofu, bunch of sauteed vegetables, some brown rice, and I top it with some avocado. I personally don't use many processed oils. I try to use the, the um, uh, more avocado and nut fats. I do occasionally use some sesame oil when I make certain dressings. But again, that's just personal preference. There's data that support on both sides of that argument over processed oils or not processed oils. Like, or like, here's another typical day. One of my favorite breakfasts is Ezekiel bread and peanut butter, and I bake apples and throw it on top. It's like a little cake. It's very delicious, very nutritious. Um, I have a little empty package back there. Trader Joe's makes cruciferous crunch. This stuff is, uh, Kenzie and I were talking about, it's like addicting. It's shredded kale, cabbage, and 
Brussels sprouts. It's wonderful. I make a dressing with salsa and mashed up avocados and lime juice. It's kind of yummy. It's almost like a Thai salad. I throw roasted chickpeas on top and have grapes as a dessert. And then often dinner, rice and beans, veggies, and avocado. Sometimes I have rice and beans for breakfast. Just depends. But I have people say, oh, don't you starve to death? What do you eat? And I feel just fine. And doctor, and a lot of people say, why don't you snack? Dr. Furman uh, kind of promotes not snacking. So that's, I took my inspiration from him, and I feel fine eating just three meals a day with nothing in between. But again, personal preference. If you have blood sugar issues, you know, then have that conversation with your healthcare provider to make sure you're not getting hypoglycemic. So I'd like to now empower you with the, some of the resources of how you can further educate yourself. So I always love this, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food, our father of medicine. So where to start? I always tell people, you know, it, it doesn't mean now tomorrow you wake up and everything's thrown out of your kitchen and that's it. If that's what you choose to do, that's cool. If you don't, I just tell people make small changes, little baby steps. Maybe adopt Meatless Monday. That's a movement. Um, just add more whole foods, plant-based foods to your meals. Um, try new recipes that are whole food, plant-based, and see how they taste. That may, you know, to find some of your favorites. Try to switch from some of those sugary processed desserts to fresh fruit. And also, you can get consult with your MD. A nutritionist can help you. Can I have a little? I'll get a little warm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, but I'm there too, so that's okay. Um, can help you with with some of that. But again, just baby steps. It's like, you know, change doesn't necessarily happen overnight. I wasn't, you know, this has been a long process. My journey's been over my year, over all these years, and I'm not perfect. And I just, you know, you do the best you can day to day. So another resource for anybody who's actually been diagnosed with cardiovascular heart disease, had a um, heart attack, Sarasota Memorial now offers the Dean Ornish program. This is a very comprehensive program. Um, our lovely, she, she's not here, our lovely Dr. Chippy Naluri, one of our cardio uh, local cardiologists, helped bring this program to the area, and um, you need a physician referral, a prescription, and there has to be, I don't know the exact details, but your doctor could fill you in on that. And we offer that here through Sarasota Memorial. I actually think they do the program at the HealthFit building, and it's comprehensive, low-fat diet, um, uh, lifestyle changes, stress reduction, he promotes meditation, um, social connections. It's a, it, it's a very comprehensive program. Dr. Dean Ornish has been doing this for many, many years. I don't even, I, I've heard of him 30 years ago, maybe. I don't know. He's out of um, at least 30? Yeah, at, at least 40. He doesn't seem like he would be that old, but he probably started really young. He's out of the um, San Francisco area. There's also another good resource, Dr. Neil Barnard. He has, uh, I've been following him for 20, 30 years, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. There were a couple of extra magazines that I left back there. He has this free app of 21 days of menus to, he calls it 21 day vegan kickstart. He's a medical doctor. He's been promoting this lifestyle for many, many years. He has his own hospital that uses food as medicine in Washington, D.C. He also has been very instrumental in, re in reducing testing on animals in medical schools and for products and things like that. That's just one of his goals. Uh, I had, I was able to hear him speak a couple of times at Tampa Hospital where he's implemented his diabetes program. And he's also listed on the, the resource uh, pages that I have there. Then my favorite, Dr. Furman, I also put a little uh, handout of what his program is in this book, Eat to Live. It's a very detailed six-week program. He's even got options for people who aren't completely ready to give up meat. So there's a, this is a very good resource. Ocean Robbins, who is the son of John Robbins, who wrote that book, Diet for a New America. Of course, being raised uh, in the whole food plant-based lifestyle, 
he is now um, a big uh, voice of the movement, and he just came out this, I think his book just came out maybe a couple of weeks ago, 31 Day Food Revolution, How to Heal Yourself and the Planet, and it's very comprehensive, and it's a, I haven't read all of it, I've just started, it's, a, it's very good. And then Forks Over Knives offers, you can try their meal planner free for 14 days, it gives you all these um, recipes to help you get started. So there's a lot of resources out there. So our take home message, it's a way eating that I think, and I agree, really celebrates the planet and helps Mother Earth um, by eliminating all these animal products and some of these unhealthy foods. It does boost health, and I think that as, as time goes on that we will really see the link between um, a high animal product consumption and processed foods and chronic diseases. It's good for Mother Earth. Make small changes. And remember, this is a commitment to your health. And that's kind of it. So I hope I inspired you. I hope I educated you. And I hope I empowered you. So thank you. Thank you. And then if there, thank you for coming. And if there's any questions, and Susan has a question. Eating out, okay, that's a, right, that's a really, really good question. Now, me, because I also have a husband who eat, we eat identical, we're particular where we go, and we generally feel safe when we go to Asian restaurants, because we can usually get edamame, vegetarian, rice, and you can always get brown rice. Um, I will you know, if I'm on the run, I'll go to the Whole Foods. Um, I know there are some vegetarian, vegan restaurants. I d can't name them in town because I don't go there. Right. So. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, and so, yeah, you just kind of like, is it safe to go there? And then you just kind of look around and see what kind of food is in those places. Mm -hmm. and, you know, whatever. So, if that kind of area you're eating in is like a Chinese restaurant, it's Chinese restaurant, like, but there's more and more and more yeah. local options and more and even with an online shop, you can order. Oh, definitely. You can order directly, you know, rather than having to go to a restaurant. Yes. Um, and you can, I mean, you can get a salad and vegetables pretty much everywhere you know I just don't personally don't eat out a lot so I just kind of stick to a couple of places that I go to I know um, Simon's I would say offers a lot of vegetarian and raw vegan stuff that's right and that's about but I think your suggestion is good wherever you go just say give me some vegetables or and you know and veg down that's right some place yes Oh, I didn't know that. Cool. Right. 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 Well, that's what in the, um, and I don't have it, the article that I pulled from uh, Britain is that they don't have like a food pyramid, but they got this like little graph, and that is is like if you turned around, it'd be at the very bottom too. They flip it, flip it over. Yeah, I think that you know, it's definitely here to stay, and I think that it's better. It's good for our health. So even if you stop eating it, eating meat, uh, animal products, or just reduce them. So, any other questions? No. Oh, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So you can make a meal based on what's on the north side at this certain area, and as you are eating, as you go to the south, then you can try it at this area. 
Right. Well, you know, and my, my I was one of my reasons for this is I've had many patients say, my doctor told me to stop eating meat, and they were confused on the resources, thinking, I'm just going to eat kale all day. You know, you think that you give up meat, then that's, you know, th that, that that's the only option. I don't know why, but that's okay. Um, but, uh, you know, that's why you can, as, you, as I say, you can arm yourself with the information and actually take it to your healthcare provider and say, hey, here's what I'm thinking of doing. You know, I can't give you advice. That's not my role. But, you know, it, everybody's grown ups and they can, they can, you know, do what they want. But certainly adding more whole food plant based foods into your diet isn't going to hurt you. So, you know, but anybody with any kind of, you know, like you said, diabetes and those kinds of things, it's good to consult with your healthcare provider, definitely.